In this video, we're gonna be going over a few tips that will dramatically improve your archery shooting. Are you ready? Let's get into it. All right, so the first tip that I have for you guys is to make sure that you dial in your draw length. Now, the reason why that's so important is because your draw length is going to um, affect how your bow holds. So, for example, if it's too long, you're going to be really swirly. Your pin's going to be all over the place on the target. If it's too short, you're not really going to be able to execute your shot properly. And if it's really short and your, your elbow's bent, that's going to really affect the way that you hold too. So dialing in your draw length is super important. It's going to really affect the way that you hold your bow and the way that your pin sits on your target. For example, I shoot a Matthews. The draw lengths on the Matthews bows are adjustable in half inch increments. But for example, I'm a 28 and a half. Um, that's just what feels comfortable to me. But it's more like 28 and a quarter. And the way that I squeezed out that quarter of an inch is I just adjusted my cables. So I twisted up my cables to shorten my draw length just by that quarter of an inch. I think I put like one turn in each, each cable and that uh, shortened it right up for me and made it comfortable. Another way that you can do that is just by playing around with the size of D loop on your string. Um, and micro tuning your draw length that way. I know that I went through like two or three D loops when I was setting up my bow just to get it perfect and get it so that my arm is just slightly not fully extended. It's like right here and that allows me to pull through my shot and expand through my shot and get proper shot execution. My next tip for you guys, obviously, you're going to want a tuned bow. If your bow is um, improperly tuned or really out of tune, it can cause the ass end of your arrow to flare around and that can um, dramatically increase the size of your groups with your arrows. Uh, it it does, you can have the best arrows in the world if your bow is not tuned you're going to get group inconsistencies so making sure that you have a properly tuned bow is very important when shooting archery. If you guys are wondering how you tune your bow or double check to make sure your bow is in tune, um, stay tuned. We'll have a video out soon. We're going to be building a custom paper tuner that you can um, you know, swap different kind of paper in and out of and it's just going to be super portable. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. We'll have a video out on that shortly, uh, making a really cool paper tuner uh, so you guys can do it yourself at home. Next up is making that you get decent arrows. Now you don't need the most expensive arrows on the market, but it is nice to have some pretty nice consistent arrows. For example, these are the Easton Axis Long Range. These ones are the match grade versions. Now, like I was saying, you can go for a more budget option or go for uh, ones that are a little bit more expensive. It's up to you. But as long as they're of decent quality and from a reputable brand, um, you really shouldn't have a problem with your arrows. But making sure that you have good, consistent arrows is a pretty uh, plays a pretty big part in your accuracy when shooting archery. Next up on the list, guys, is stabilizers. Now, I have a 15-inch front bar and a 10-inch uh, back bar, but... Um, Setting up your stabilizers in a way that feels good for you is very important. Make sure that if you have a stabilizer where you can adjust the weights on the front and or on the back, make sure that you do it and make sure that you uh, tinker with them extensively until your bow sits properly in your hand and uh, holds well for you. Um, tinkering with the weights can affect the way that your bow holds. For example, if I put one extra ounce on the front of this thing, I felt like I was all over the place and then I took it off and it shoots fine now. I can, I can hold my pin on a tiny little flag at 30 yards, like no problem. So um, yeah, stabilizers and playing around with stabilizer weights uh, is definitely important and can definitely improve your accuracy. All right, so now that we have the gear out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about form. All right, so these form tips are going to cover any type of release that you're using, whether it's index style, whether it's a hinge style release, whether it's a thumb button release, all of these form tips are going to apply to any one of them. Now, as you guys may know, if you follow the channel, I shoot a hinge style release, but this was my dude for a while. Um, this right here is a Cobra Heartland Bow Hunter um, index style release. It's the hook style, which I prefer. I don't like the caliper styles. I will always shoot a hook style if I'm shooting an index style release. And um, basically, 
One of the forearm techniques that I'm going to show you right now is a way to draw your bow to prevent shoulder injuries, to prevent you know any type of injuries from pulling downwards like this. You can really um, hurt your shoulders and the muscles inside your shoulders. I'm going to show you the proper way that anyone shooting any release should pull back their bow. So one of the ways that I see a lot of people pull back their bows is they'll point it way up in the sky, hook on, pull it down like this, and then get on target. Now. If you shoot like that, um, practicing in your backyard is going to be a little bit sketchy because obviously you're pointing way up in the air. If your D-loop or anything were to, God forbid, fail, you're sending an arrow like 300 feet. So um, that can be a little sketchy. Also, when you're pulling down like this, you're putting all of the uh, force required to pull your bow back in your rear delt and um, like your back shoulder muscle here. Now, that can put a lot of strain on your shoulder. Obviously, you're pulling back 60, 70, some bows even go up to like 85 pounds. One way that I will say, and that I like to pull back my bow, which I've kind of always done, is I lift both of my arms up like this. And then as I come down, I pull it back with my elbow high. What that does is it lets the biggest muscle in your back, your lat, and one of the strongest muscles that you have is your, your bicep and your arm. It allows both of those to work together and you kind of lever the bow back and down and that's how you pull the bow back. Elbow high and back. So that's been one of the most efficient ways that I've found to pull a bow back and it just puts a lot less strain on your shoulder that way. So that is how I would recommend you guys pull your bow back. All right, next up on the list is going to be shot execution. So the way that I recommend to shoot is to always shoot with your back. No matter what style of release you are shooting, you want your back to do the majority of the work when setting off that release. Now this is gonna be really hard for anyone who already suffers with target panic with an index style release or a thumb release. I don't have a thumb re release with me on hand. It's in my dad's truck. He took his truck to go somewhere. so. I don't have one, but I will be demonstrating how to shoot an index style release with your back. So the way that I like to do this is I'll get to my full draw, get back, get anchored, wrap my finger around the trigger. A lot of people like it really deep. I like it just right there. And then I'll keep my finger in place, holding it where it is. And then once I get back and I'm in my you know location, I'll pull, pull, pull my shoulders and I'll keep my finger stationary. And what that'll do is it'll slowly pull that trigger as I pull back and it'll let it go. It's hard to explain, but if you guys want to do this at home, you don't want to send arrows into targets, make sure you check out our website at hangandhunt.com. We have a shot trainer available that will go around your bow. It goes around the cams of your bow. And um, it's, basically, it's basically dry firing your bow without destroying it. So if you guys want to do this at home and you don't want to send an arrow somewhere where you know, you're not comfortable because you haven't shot this way before, make sure you go check it out. But we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that right now. Get back into full draw, wrap my finger around the trigger and hold it, hold it firmly, and then pull back with my shoulder blades. Now when I do that, I'm kind of pinching my shoulder blades together and pulling down with my lat at the same time. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So apologies for the long hold, there was a lot of wind right there, but all that was putting my finger over the trigger, pulling, 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 and slightly applying pressure as I pull with my index, and the shot just breaks. And um, I'm going to go down there and retrieve my arrow, but let's go see where it went. Now mind you, I do shoot a hinge style release, and um, you know, you have different anchor points with an index, and you have different peep sight heights with an index style release compared to shooting one of these so it might be a little off but let's go check all right guys so i'm going to go ahead and flash that picture up here i actually wasn't too far off which is surprising i really thought that i'd be um more off than that but as you can see shooting this way is super effective i just went back and forth and at 30 yards i'm almost hitting a flag, I don't know, maybe 
inch and a half by like three inches. So not horrible, I'll take it. Obviously with a hinge, you have to pull back a different way. Pull back, rotate till it clicks. I have a video out going over how to shoot one of these things. I also ended up breaking my bow in that video. So if you wanna check it out, make sure it'll pop up in one of the corners over here. Um, I have a full, uh, more in-depth video on how to shoot this thing. Make sure you go check it out. We're just gonna pull back and uh, pinch my shoulder blades together and my shoulder and my, my lat. And I'm just gonna explode through the shot, show you that. Again, a little long hold. There was a little gust of wind. I swear to God, it's like the wind waits until I pull the bow back to come through here. But I'm gonna walk down there and take a picture. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and flash a picture up of that shot. As you can see, super effective way to shoot the old hinge. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap up the form section of the video. Now let's get into the most important part of the video. The most important tip in this list. Practice. Now I know that sounds like, you know, obvious. But getting out there and shooting 100, 150 arrows a day, I know that sounds like a lot. but it's really going to um, you know, improve your form. You're gonna get more comfortable with it. Everything's gonna get more repeatable because archery is all about repetition. Basically what I'm trying to say is that practicing with your equipment every single day from close and long range is gonna get you familiar with it and you're just gonna know what to do in different situations, whether that's hunting or in a 3D situation. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos just like this one make sure you get subscribed and um, if you guys are liking the content so far give us a thumbs up that basically just tells YouTube that you like the video and it will send it out to more people so that uh, more people you know will get this information it could help them out thank you guys so much for watching catch you in the next one ciao